The largest primary school in the country officially opened today with a multi-million dollar price tag to match. The state-of-the-art T.G. Glover Primary School, once plagued by structural deficiencies, was completely rebuilt and possibly holds in its future a larger student population since an amalgamation is possible. Shanique Miller reports. A proud day for the students of the T.G. Glover Primary School. It hasn't been a year since they entered their new campus, and the pride they feel is hard to miss. This school's history has been a turbulent one. For the past 10 years, these students have been separated, reporting to three different campuses as construction on the Horseshoe Drive School hit one delay after another. Apologizing to parents, teachers, and staff, Prime Minister Ingram described the reasons for the delay. The project was plagued with difficulties. It had many difficulties with the site. First caverns and sinkholes at the site had to be backfilled and stabilized. Then debris appeared to had to be removed from the site. What appears to have been an early landfill on these grounds for abandoned cars and old furniture. Then a, skill, a skin malady affected some of the construction workers had to be investigated and addressed. And then the, roof, the same assembly hall you see here now collapsed during construction due to design failure, not E.R. Hanna's failure. An extension of the contract in September 2010 proved inadequate and was not until last year, September, that the school was able to commence occupation. Troubles forgotten, the teachers and students are proud of their $15.1 million state-of-the-art campus. In the way of primary schools, T.G. Glover's is to be envied. The building's design is unique and features a covered pedestrian stairway that connects the structure's two levels. Now with only 630 students, officials say the school is vastly underpopulated. Having already undergone an amalgamation, another one could be on the way based on this directive the Prime Minister gave to the Ministry of Education. I await recommendations from the Department of Education as to how this school, with just over 600 students, is going to be fully populated by the reconfiguration of the catchment area, presumably of the Oaksfield Primary, which is bursting at the same, and or the Mabel Walker Primary School down the road on Tucker Road to see how we can populate the school because the fact is the school is far too large for the number of students we have in it today. Prime Minister Ingram then shifted the focus of his address to the state of young people in the Bahamas. He said this investment in education is about more than just modern buildings. Instead, it's about changing the mindset of a generation. This is the place here at TG Global where we must concentrate on learning and reading and writing, add and subtract, and to become good at all those things taught in our primary schools, courtesy and good manners, cleanliness and good hygiene. Prime Minister Ingram talked about rites of passage and how too often children fall into gangs, others teenage pregnancy and other failings. He says institutions like TG Glover play a role in forming a child and parents factor prominently in this. And parents, your children's teachers can never be a substitute for the love, care, discipline and firm guidance that a parent or guardian can and must bestow. The sad spectacle of young men in chains and handcuffs on our television, court, our television screens going to court or prison has become a badge of honor and a rite of passage for some. There's no honor in this, and the sad result of such a rite of passage is one of wasted lives, blighted hopes, stunned, stunted employment prospects, and often early deaths. Ms. Ingram encouraged students to study hard, achieve and maintain a perfect attendance record, and work to ensure that their campus is the best in the country. T.G. Glover is named in honor of a veteran educator, Theodore Grant Glover. Shanique Miller, 7S News.